Welcome to the Joshua Matos Show. I'm Joshua Matos, your full stack software engineer. I'd like to welcome you to my very first podcast. Now, I created this podcast specifically for you, for people who are looking to get into software engineering or have some experience and would like to gain some insight from best practices or industry standards, right? So one of the reasons I created this channel is I used to think when you became a full stack software engineer that all you would be doing is coding in a dark room somewhere. And the reality is you're involved in so much more as a software engineer. You're involved in DevSecOps, you're involved in discovery and framing, scoping, you're providing insight to uh, a balanced team. So what does that mean? Uh, well, a lot of agile or modern organizations that practice XP have a balanced team. So usually on a balanced team, you'll have a product manager, you'll have uh, UI, UX, that's your user experience uh, designer um, on your team, and then you'll have several uh, devs on the team. And the product manager is really responsible for kind of the overall direction of the team, prioritizing stories, uh, the designer is really trying to nail down what the user would like from the application. And you as a software engineer, you're doing a lot more than just coding. You're offering your insights, you're giving feedback, you're letting them know um, what's feasible. And so in order to be a successful software engineer, you have to know how to code, you have to know about architecture, and you have to know how to work within a balanced team. And that's really what this podcast is about, to, to not only educate you on full stack development, but to give you insight on how your life will be as a software engineer. And if you already are a software engineer, hopefully you'll gain some, some insights that you perhaps didn't know. So you may be wondering, what exactly is a full stack software engineer? How does it differ from other engineers? Well, the obvious answer is, is that you work on the front end. So that's going to be technologies such as uh, React, Angular, um, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. So you'll also be working on the back end. So that means you'll be working on Spring Boot, Golang, and other back end languages. But there's a little bit more to it. You'll also be working with SQL. Um, Kafka, other technologies, Kubernetes, you'll have to have an understanding of things beyond the front end and back end. You also have to know how these systems interconnect. So hopefully I can answer some of these questions for you so that you understand exactly what it is that you need to do um, to prepare for your first software engineering interview. Or maybe you're looking for a promotion within your company and you want to provide some insights and some value to them. And I'll be trying to answer those questions for you throughout this podcast and in later episodes. So with that, this podcast is about providing value. And in this segment, it's the questions answered segment. And here, any questions from the audience, I'll try to answer, give you some insights and try to give you some value. And one of the questions came up in the YouTube comment section uh, for the YouTube channel. If you haven't checked that out, that's uh, Joshua Matos Dev on YouTube. Be sure to uh, go ahead and check that one out. And so one of the questions that was asked was, what should I do with Java memory? If I'm in an interview, what exactly might someone be looking for? And I'll say there's five top things I think you should uh, know about Java memory. And, you know, maybe later on I'll throw up a, uh, for, for those of you who are interested, I'll throw a YouTube video up so you can check that out. And so the very first thing you should know about Java memory is how it works in the stack, right? Uh, you'll get a lot of examples with recursion. Uh, this is a great example of how Java memory works and how things are kind of queued on a stack. And another thing to know about Java memory is kind of a cycle. So you have something called Eden memory, you'll have garbage collection, uh, these type of things, right? Another great thing to know about uh, Java memory is what if something happens wrong, right? So you have out of memory, you'll have a stack overflow, 
um, and you'll have memory leaks. So you might get asked in an interview, hey, when does a memory leak happen? Um, so try to look for some examples um, when a memory leak would happen and how you would go about fixing it. Right, so what is a good example of a memory leak? So one would be having a static field in a class and suppose it was a array list. So every time your class was instantiated, you would add to the static array list. Now, if that's only one or two classes, you're fine. But what if it's a thousand? Um, then you would have all of these uh, strings hanging out in your static variables or your static reference, and that's not good. So you gotta be careful about those kind of things and make sure you uh, clean it up or remove it. And I think in these type of questions is really where you nail the interview. Because let's say you do have a memory leak in your application. Is this application in production? If it is, what do you do? How do you go about fixing it? Do you talk to your product manager? Do you talk to your uh, senior engineer on the team and get his insights? Um, how do you prior prioritize that? Um, so there's all these other questions and insights that you can answer to the person interviewing you to let them know that you really have a grasp, not only on the technology, but how to work on a balanced team. So it's really important. And in later episodes, we'll, we'll dive deep in kind of how you go about navigating those kind of issues. So in an interview, I don't expect um, anyone to really want you to know what garbage collection is in great detail, like what is Eden space, promotion over time, um, major versus minor collection, things like this. Really, it's about your ability to communicate complex ideas and um, problem solve. That's really what the interview is all about. And of course, the more prepared and competent you are, uh, the easier an interview will be. So another question from the audience was, what is your favorite technology? And for me, it's Spring Boot. Um, I like it because it has auto configuration. Um, it's opinionated. So what that means is it will give me default configurations. If there's something that it needs from me, it'll fail fast. And that lets me know what configuration details I need to provide to it. And so it's really flexible. It um, has inversion of control. It uses Apache um, servlet. Um, it has a powerful JPA query language. And yeah, it just makes it easier for me to deploy um, applications. Now, if you're working at different organizations, you might not use Spring or the Spring framework. Um, Google has Golang, um, heavy on Python. They definitely use Java. Um, so other companies uh, may have their um, own custom solutions, which they'll probably send you to a school for to, um, to learn about. But regardless, the Spring Framework really provides a, a good way for you to get into developing applications. All right, and so one of the last things I'd like to cover is a question I was asked, and that question was, what skill set uh, do you recommend that I develop? And that's important as a software engineer. And so the answer to that question is refactoring. Um, refactoring is a skill set that you'll develop throughout your career. Um, you might find yourself on an old code base and it might be a new code base. And you'll see that there's a lot of repetition. Uh, so there's something called dry, do not repeat yourself. Uh, you'll notice opportunity for other design patterns. And what it'll do is uh, improve the code base and it really pays off because long-term, it'll be much more easier to maintain your code if um, you refactor it um, to, to standard. Uh, another uh, thing that happens is sometimes it'll be your own code. So three months from now, four months from now, as you're coding your application, you'll learn all sorts of neat tricks, um, best practices, and you'll come across code that you wrote before. And when that happens, it's um, you might notice that there's something you did wrong, 
Um, there's uh, perhaps performance uh, issues that might be uh, affecting your application that needs to be addressed. And it's an opportunity to refactor and make your, make your code better. Um, no matter what, you're always refactoring. And so there's a guy named Bill Schofield, and he used to work for Electronic Arts EA. He's a um, uh, practice lead within uh, VMware, and he does a lot of talks on refactoring. And so he has a GitHub repository. It's uh, github.com forward slash Bill Schofield. I recommend you check it out if it's a skill that you're looking to develop. And so let's move on to the next question. Um, another question that was asked was, how do you go about displaying images and, and swing uh, so that they're layered? So you can put a text behind an image or text on top of an image. So if you wanna put something on a separate layer inside of swing, there's something called a J layered pane. And it's part of the swing library and essentially you add things in a layered uh, manner inside of this uh, component, and you could put an image in one layer and text in another. Um, of course, the other thing is knowing how to get to your resource wherever you have this image. You can download it from a URL. You can also just uh, pull it from your class path uh, resource. I'll create a video on how to use a J layered pane for you in one of my uh, videos on YouTube. Be on the lookout for that if you're interested. And yeah, so those are a couple of the questions that were asked from the audience. So if you're looking to get started as a full stack software engineer, you kind of should know where to start, right? And I told you earlier to pick a language. Um, I think the best language to get started with is Java um, for the back end. If you want to get started with the front end, JavaScript or TypeScript, um, better yet, would be a good place to start. Um, and it's it's really up to you. Where your skills will really come to shine is how you problem solve. And that comes with time. You continue to program applications, you'll continue to run into issues, and then you'll have to solve those problems, right? And being a software engineer is really about solving problems whether it's for your team, whether it's in the code, or for um, your company. And so focus on learning the code and the rest will come with experience and gaining knowledge. Um, you'll gain knowledge from this podcast for sure. So be on the lookout for other episodes that I'll release. Hey, thanks for sticking around. That's the very first episode of the Joshua Mato Show. Uh, be on the lookout for the next episodes where I'll try to answer more questions about best practices and things about Spring Boot, TypeScript, and other technologies. Be on the lookout for other episodes where I'll have guests on and hopefully we'll provide some value to you and try to answer some interesting questions from the YouTube channel um, comments that you guys leave behind. I'll see you on the next one.